Hello. Hello. I would like everybody to know that my neighborhood Facebook group recently decided to start a neighborhood chat, which was going fairly fine until I guess, I don't know, something happened this weekend. Some, some dudes started popping off and other people were getting pissy at him and his whole attitude was just, I'm going to say what I'm going to say where I oh. say and all this and our, our admins just messaged and they were like, all right, we, we like removed a bunch of stuff. So, but like, if it happens again, just disassociate it with the group or start your own chat. I don't care. I don't have time to babysit a bunch of adults. And I was like, you can't just start a chat room and then be like, I don't want to deal with it. Uh, <laughs> I'll still love a guy that's just like, I have zero emotional intelligence, but I'm the good guy in this story. Like, yeah, I'll man. Just say Pop what off. I want to say. It's very, like, for me, mildly whiplash slash uh, contrasting because, um, as part of my uh, daily thing to try to, you know, improve my writing and stuff, I since I can't get out to like, well, one, I can't get out to people watch as much as I used to anymore. But also, um, uh, my brain's catching up. I like to do different kinds of research for writing and story analysis is one of my favorite types. And I, I recently discovered a channel that I am obsessed with now called Snee. And he does such great analysis and stuff, right? And uh, I, I just watched a couple of videos on like how certain like how certain TV shows and stuff are handling like writing masculinity and writing men and like the, the nuance and the different like bridge characteristics and all these other things. And then so to see like that and then to go to the chat where there's just this like <laughs> this, this straw man macho guy and I'm like, oh, people. Yeah, it's so, <laughs> so funny. You see sometimes you see a guy and you're just like, you can't be real. It, yes, you they have are. to be fictional. Like you're you're, you're, so you're too poorly written to be a good person or to be like a real person. Like <laughs> you're too poorly written. Like to homie, be real. your existence is amateurish. What's going on? Fox said your neighborhood chat is the real writing research. I accept no other answer. That's my new people watching now. Yeah. Instead of leaving my house, I just observe my neighborhood chat room. Hello, hi everyone. Hey, hi. Hey, Mimi. Yes, please remember to hit the like button. Get your water ready. I asked my son to get me a cup of water specifically because I saw this message, and he selected this cup, which I love. This cup. Yes, I love it. <laughs> my son goes, "You love it? I picked the right one." Hello, hi, greetings. Sounds like the people who want a dog or cat or any animal for that matter, but don't want the responsibility Jordan. of taking it. The the admins, yeah. Hello. <laughs> I I'm sorry, sir, but you seem to have jumped out of bad nineties. <laughs> yeah, like, oh, sir, who wrote you? Not me. Your son is awesome. Why, thank you. I agree. Am I the only one who wants to tell these men to stop being such a teenager? <laughs> oh, that's great. Who are you? Never in your life. Actually, I've been drinking water every day, actually, because um, I wanted to start drinking. Well, granted, I just want to drink, like, one cup of water a day, right? Because... As much as like all of the health things and everything are like water is the best for you. And I'll, no, I live in the South. I am aware this is mild bullshit. Yes, water is good for you. However, you know what's better for you? Lemonade, fruit infused water, because it replenishes your electrolytes and uh, like and gives you vitamins and stuff like wa water is good. 
But water actually doesn't hydrate you that well. <laughs> it's weird. But you do need water in your system for it to like do certain things that it's supposed to do. So like definitely need water, just not as much water. So on my little bird app, I put like drink a water. And so now in, in order to make my little bird happy, I have to drink a cup of water a day. And then I return to nothing but sweet tea. Which my daughter's pediatrician recently judged me for how, because she was like, how much sweet tea does your daughter drink? And I'm like, three cups a day. And she's like, that's a lot of sugar. And I'm like, Mind still less sugar than soda. Like, I'm like, bruh, bruh. I drink bean and the, <laughs> the coffee, that one. A cup of coffee a day is also good for you. I was going to say the um, worst thing that ever happened to me health wise was mm. reading an article like a scholarly well-sourced article saying that coffee is in fact hydrating and that the fact that the idea that coffee dehydrates you is actually a myth. Caffeine itself is of course a diuretic, but you know, coffee yeah. is predominantly water. So the bit of caffeine you're getting doesn't counteract the water. So I was like, oh, yeah. cool. I can have you, coffee and only coffee for all of my water for the day. No. <laughs> and the article goes, hey, no, that's not what we meant. <laughs> and I went, no, I no. understand you. I can have nothing but coffee all day. Thank you. You're like, no, no, you said it was like water. You said no. it was like water. It's fine. No, the 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 like problem slash idea, which I want it on note, I am not a dietitian. I am not a nutritionist, which, oh, by the way. Um, I recently learned the difference between a nutritionist and a dietitian. Uh, you have to be licensed to be a dietitian. You don't have oh. to be licensed to be a nutritionist. So take that information <laughs> and use it how you will. Yeah, I would imagine a dietitian, like, you need to, like, I feel like you both need to know about food and also, like, the human body. Mm -hmm. and each individual case whereas a nutritionist can just be like yeah vegetables are good for you man and it's like <laughs> oh I mean, yeah we knew that but the but like a, the thing that like a lot of diet articles and all of that are you actually should drink a variety of things in a day mm -hmm. it's like like is water good for you yes is water the only thing you should drink in a day no <laughs> Is right. coffee good for you? Yes. Should you drink a pot of coffee a day? Yeah. No. Well, <laughs> meth all of you. It's, but um, but yeah. So it's it's really just like you're supposed to drink a certain amount of liquid a day, and then like, but the liquid should be different things. Mm -hmm. So yeah, because because also like juices, especially if you're drinking nothing but acidic juices, can Ooh, actually yeah. turn your pee acidic, and then it's not and it's just, not like, fun damage thing. your enamel, damage your stomach lining, like mm -hmm. yeah, give you a rash in a very uncomfortable place. Yeah, no one be pumping eight juice boxes a day. That's too many juice boxes. <laughs> so there's like it's one of those things where you you need a variety. That's also like uh. Because my kids had their yearly checkup. Well, two of them had their yearly checkup recently. The third one's coming up this Thursday. So, of course, I got to talk to their pediatrician about, like, their dietary things. And uh, she was talking to one of them. And she's like, do you like milk? And I'm like, oh, yeah, that kid drinks a lot of milk. And she's like, well, how much? <laughs> because she's like, if he's drinking too much, it can cause these issues. But we definitely do want him to drink a nice amount for his bones and growth and stuff. And I was like, he drinks about three cups a day. And she's like, oh, three cups of milk is fine. But three cups of sweet tea will get you judged. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm no. so salty about that. I'm judged for sweet tea no matter where I go. No matter what's going on in life. So. When I was growing up, uh, me and my <laughs> siblings one cup I've ever <laughs> uh, used to routinely go through one to two gallons of milk a day. <laughs> oh, yeah. Did. Like, just power through milk. Yeah. See, our, my children live in a weird paradox. If we buy two gallons of milk, it will take mm -hmm. them two weeks to get through the first gallon. If we buy one gallon of milk, it will be gone in two, three days. Oh, and that's supply and demand. Lower the supply, you're going to get a higher <laughs> demand. That's economic. That's pretty much it. 
Um, that's what Jen likes how you think. You mean you're not supposed to survive on coffee? Hmm, I think that's amazing. Um, if you're not supposed to survive on coffee, why does it make you feel so good and then so terrible? I was mm. about to say, tell me that after you've had a whole pot, Matt, in one day. When I have a whole pot and I'm afraid of everything on Earth? You mean then? <laughs> uh, and fruit juices will spike your... Yes, this is mm -hmm. the other that's thing when people are like, sweet tea, oh, the sugar. Uh, let me tell you. Natural sugars from juices are worse for you than processed sugar. Oh, fruit juice well, is so in like, anything but moderation is very not good. Yeah, so it's like, don't you be judging my slightly flavored sugar water? <laughs> Especially since like my children drink fruit teas, you know? So oh. they're they're drinking like raspberry sweet tea in that. So well, they get antioxidants from the raspberries. Exactly. So don't be judging. Also, it's like there's not as much sugar in the sweet tea as I think some people think because mm -hmm. they drink with the raspberry and that naturally sweetens it a little bit. So yeah. do people not understand in the cell sweet tea is our water? Apparently not. Uh, yeah. Thank you. We uh that is that's what we do. Sips really sweet decaf iced tea. <laughs> Y'all are gonna make me make sweet tea right now and i don't have the means to do that i don't have well i guess i could it would just be just come over matt i've got some raspberry tea. sweet tea yeah actually i have a tea cabinet it's just a, it's a cabinet with like a bunch well it's the tea and coffee cabinet it's like got three shelves with just different types of teas and coffee in there and uh there's this one box of it's funny fox and i had a culture shock both of us did because I was like, oh, you know, I just made her some basic tea, which, you know, in America is the Lipton tea. And I forgot yeah. what it was. But to him, Lipton is something completely different. Like he had never heard of Lipton tea and I had mm -hmm. never heard of whatever his Lipton was. And we were both just like, what the fuck what is, is your country? Yeah. No, my issue is that my tea no, cabinet no, no, no. is <laughs> almost entirely green tea at this point because I've become a green tea fiend. Bro, we were up in Gatlinburg and we went out somewhere to eat and somebody was like pouring sugar into cold tea and I was extra oh. I was hold on the reason this confused me was cuz it was like fountain drinks, right? And so you had the sweet and the unsweet tea side by side and both were or, and the the uh sweet tea was mildly warm cuz it was freshly brewed, which no tea better then freshly brewed warm sweet tea with that ice on top. Oh, that's the best. But um, but yeah, they just they poured themselves some unsweet tea and then Bro, mix the two. Oh, mix let me tell them. you, let me tell you, the tea. No, here's the thing that got me. The cup was like this big, right? So this is how big the cup was. And there was like, I swear, there was this much sugar in it. I'm like, what are you doing? I... You could have just started with the sweet tea and added more sugar if that's what you needed. But also, we're at 14 and a half minutes in. So, Matt, do your intro right quick, and then we'll we'll keep going with the... Right. Uh, yellow, I am Matt Holland. I'm a dark fantasy author working on my debut dark fantasy novel. I do have a short story called The White Harvester. It's a part, It's a pirate story. And it is featured in Sasha Black's The Rebel Diaries Anthology, alongside 12 other fantastic short stories. It is available for purchase in, on Amazon and any of those other book purchasing websites. There's links hanging out down in my link tree. While Buy you're there, the you... anthology for The White Harvester, get 12 bonus stories is yeah. how I look at it. I mean, <laughs> it's a good deal. And then also, uh, while you're there clicking on all my links... Uh, I have an Instagram, a Twitter, and a TikTok. Feel free to follow me on all of those. This year's been really bad for me for social media. I'm trying to get back onto it, starting where I'm most comfortable on Twitter. I'm back to tweeting pretty regularly. And then we're slowly going to work TikToks back into the equation. Are you going to join that um, new Threads, I think it's called? I've seen all the <laughs> jokes making fun Twitter. of Threads that I'm just like, oh... And I've made already some jokes making fun of threads, so I've never actually been on it. So, but yeah, I don't, I don't know that I can. I don't know that I can. 
apparently it's doing really well. Like I have heard it doing really people, well. Better than people thought it would. So yeah, but like I'm I've thinking of making of one just so it. I. I'm thinking of making one just so I can secure my username. <laughs> That's a good idea. But yeah, I've like, seen some posts from it, and it's just it. like, oh, this is Facebook humor. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Oh, is that a minion? Fantastic. And I am writing Mom Smith on Asset. This is my channel where I talk about writer things, parent things, and writer parent things. And when Matt's here, we're going to talk about food in some way, shape, form, or fashion. Food? It will come out. We are too mid southern for that. Yeah, too <laughs> mid food oriented. <laughs> Uh, on Mondays, I host live streams a lot like this where we do a lot of socializing and get some working done because I'm an outgoing extrovert and this is what I need for life. I also do events like I believe next week is the quarterly party with Tina and Laura Nettles. And then the week after that is the flash fiction free for all edition number four. I'm very excited. Fox has already made the prompts. He's very excited. I don't know what he's doing to us, Matt, but he's excited. And uh, yeah, if you would like to read samples of my writing, go to my website, samanthaillnasset.com, where you can also sign up to my newsletter to keep up to date with all things Sam and to keep up, keep up with how I'm doing with my writing experiment for the year. But yeah, like, subscribe, ring-a-ding the bell, and we'll, we will start our first sprint at around the 30-minute mark. Because we do three sprints, a 30, and then two 20s. We may end the stream short today because uh, <laughs> I just got back from a family vacation with three children. And I overdid it a little bit. And I'm due for my migraine shot, like, this week. So we'll just we'll see how, how I and my cohort hold up. I love the flash. I always describe the flash fiction free for all as uh, writing chopped. The show chopped. <laughs> like, that's what this is. We're on chopped. The only difference is uh, that we don't get eliminated one by one. We don't. Well, not officially. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying that would be kind of. I've, that, that would be kind of funny if we. Yeah. Three prompts uh, each, an appetizer no. prompt, an entree prompt, and a dessert prompt. Uh, and we said, get eliminated after each round. Fox said, can I eliminate you? Can we add this, please? We'll think about it for next year, not this year. Hold on. I have to cut my child's pizza. Just, you know, I mean, you don't know what's going to be in the mystery basket. You open it up. You work with what you got. You go yeah. to the ice cream machine. It's always a mistake. <laughs> and then you, you live and you learn you're welcome i'm excited about it i always like doing the flash fiction free for alls mm -hmm. hopefully cb won't be dying <laughs> and so she'll be there to defend her title it's um, also nice because like i've been on the same writing project for a really long time and it's nice to write other stories and give yourself have, a little like give, give me a little breather yeah excuse me um slowly getting our timer up uh i'm over here drinking a bottle of pepsi it's worse than sweet tea but i haven't had soda in months and that's it i don't judge anybody like with, with our children we have like the soda rule is that they can only drink soda between noon and 8 p.m and that's uh, because I don't want the caffeine to mess with their sleep sure. and so that they their bodies don't become reliant on caffeine to get up in the morning. Mm -hmm. uh, and then other than that, like we don't limit how much soda they have a day. And it's it's really taught them to regulate soda on their own. They only drink like one to two cups on their own for the most part. So. Mm -hmm. And they're like they're they're trying to to finesse certain sodas at night too because they were like, hey mom, so this soda says caffeine free. Can we have that? And I'm like, well, I suppose. <laughs> I did say the problem was the caffeine. Lipton gives me heartburn for some reason. The decaf. I use a generic black tea bag that is caffeine free. That's fair. 
Oh, uh, by the way, Fox's Lipton is a soup. I'm so sorry. <laughs> See, it's it's a soup. Now, by that, do you mean the brand Lipton is in a soup Canada brand. is a soup? Okay. For a second, I thought you meant like his Lipton equivalent was soup. No, and I'm just like, that's, well, the thing about soup what... is that it's not tea. So what the hell's going on? No, see, that's what that's why we were mutually confused during the conversation. Because I was like, you know, like the basic tea in, in the American South is Lipton. And he goes, the soup? And I'm like, no. This is how Fox learned that uh, Southern sweet tea is actually chicken noodle soup that you add <laughs> sugar to and then cool. Who's legally obligated to do what? Now, Fox has a message for someone's legally obligated to do a thing. Oh, I think uh, probably that you're legally obligated to eliminate us. <laughs> or CB uh, is legally obligated to be there. Which I yeah. think you've been bar borrowing her, assass her assassins to take out our new uh, guestesses. Oh, yeah. This has happened <laughs> quite a bit. Yeah. Yeah. No, CB has to show up. She's legally obligated. <laughs> Uh, I've given up sugar for periods of time before. Anyone complaining about the sugar in tea while eating white bread is too focused on others' habits. I agree. Word. Uh, yeah, it'll do great. It's a good deal buying one short story for $20 and gets 12 others. For Last I checked, it's like $11. It's not $12. <laughs> yeah, it's like, because it's like the oh, equivalent God. of a, a dollar fifty ish a short story. For a while, it was on sale for $5. I don't know if it still is. Threads is literally just Twitter, just more user-friendly. Yeah, I don't know if anybody else here watches Philip DeFranco, but that is where I get a lot of my internet news. <laughs> and he has been keeping up to date on the Threads thing. And yeah, it's it's pretty much just, ah, oh, fuck, who's the owner of Facebook? I forgot his name. Uh, Zuckerberg. Thank you. Yeah, so Mark Zuckerberg was basically just like, so Twitter's being run by a madman now. If you would like a social media site that's being run by somebody uh, sane, then come to Threads. Then come to Threads. <laughs> and then the, uh, Musk tweeted something to the effect of like, fuck Zuckerberg. Yeah, so like... They and like they have basically they've agreed to like do dick measuring contests with Twitter and Threat. So it's literally a direct competitor of Twitter right now. <laughs> like that is the point of Threads. Uh, I think people's biggest complaint with Threads was just that like you can't delete your Thread account without deleting your Instagram account, though. Which I'm like, well, that is annoying. So. Yeah. It's uh, Twitter without limits and better video. The quality. Rebel Diaries anthology is fifteen dollars for a paperback or five dollars for a Kindle edition. Well, then it could be twenty wherever. Ah, uh, yeah. No, Be Bella, you're in the U.S. of A. <laughs> so it's fifteen. <laughs> here. Uh, from what I've heard, I don't use either. That's fair. Yeah, I got on Threads myself, but I haven't used it yet. I'll probably make a Threads just to get my my uh, username. It uses the info from your... <gasps> Does that mean that, like, hold I, up, though, I imagine they probably because... can't take your username then if it's already an Instagram one. No, what I was going to say is because I used to be lazy and I would just post... See, I haven't really posted anything to Twitter because I can't just post my Instagram messages to Twitter mm -hmm. anymore because they, they took that away. But... Because Threads is owned by ins by Meta, maybe I'll be able to just connect it to my Instagram, and then my Instagram post will go to Threads, and I can be lazy somewhere else. Uh, also, I'm on Threads. It is directly linked to your Instagram, so you can link the two and carry over all your followers. Yeah. I'm fat. Bring on the food talk. I feel that in my soul. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I got three emails this morning from three different early readers with feedback on two different stories. All the feedback was superficial. One reader caught some inconsistencies. Neither are rewrites, though. Well, that's good. Um, by the way, everybody, tell me what you're working on tonight. Uh, I'm going to catch up on chat real quick, and then I'll ask you, Matt. Mm -hmm. He's used to being less important than chat. It's fine. Like the, just gotta the find where we are. I, I live with. 
Might as well win with it. Uh, we keep Sprite and Fanta in the house. Those caffeine-free soda options Fanta, the kiddo really Fanta chooses. Decades. My middle is obsessed with Sprite right now. Michelin ratings are literally from the tire people That's saying true. brands are weird. That is very fair. You didn't know that Lipton... No, I didn't know it was a soup brand. There is no Lipton soup <laughs> near me. Only Lipton tea. Is tea. Lipton is def the brand. I've used Lipton soup mix as well. Well, look, I don't feel alone because Matt also had no. I idea. didn't know. Yeah, I, I, you say Lipton, I think tea. Yeah. So sure. five for the ebook, fifteen for the paperback. Twenty for both if you want to get wild. <laughs> Zuck, by my calculations, it's the logical choice. <laughs> Uh, the drama behind Threads being announced was insanity. I could totally pop on just to talk about it. Uh, you can also share your thread post to your stories, or I assume so. I see a lot of thread stories. Anything that lets me be lazy. I'm either going to work on my debut or the fanfic of rewriting Naruto. Not sure which. In your fanfic for rewriting Naruto... I hope you do our girl Sakura better justice than mm -hmm. the actual show did. <laughs> she deserves so much more. I'm working on my whip free and not haunted. Ooh. Uh, I'm not even working. I'm just here. My current task is to revise Project Fairy World and Middle Grade Portal Fantasy. <gasps> I love me some middle grades and Portal Fantasies. I'm going to be working on my Camp Nano project, which is revising, rewriting my story, A Glittering Cage. That's such a cute title. I love that. I'll be working on my short story collection. I'm still trying to figure out titles for the individual stories as well as the collection as a whole. That's fair. 1010 needs some more love, too. <laughs> this is also fair. I'm so behind on critiquing, so I will work on that. Good, good. Sakura is a powerhouse and she deserves to be the beast she was made out to be in the beginning. Yes. Word. She so much wanted to be like a physical fighter. I think Genjutsu is the physical one. And then they just they relegated her to a healer, which I'm fine with a healing tank who can also destroy a mountain with her drop kick. But that's not what she wanted to do with her life. The book I'm reading, I'm loving so much. The author's so talented. Well, what's the book? I'll be working on my bakery rivals to lovers with Project Sugar and Spice. Nice. All right, Miss Holomew, what are you working on? I'm working on figuring out all about Lipton soup. Uh, <laughs> Fox sent me a picture, and I've I've definitely had that soup before. I just always assumed it was Campbell's because it was also <laughs> red. Like, <laughs> You can't I give me disposable. Abandoned. You can't give me disposable soup with a red and white logo and expect me to not think it's Campbell's. You think <laughs> I'm reading? I'm I'm here to eat, not read. <laughs> it's fair. But uh, what am I working on? Uh, I am working on. Basically, I'm I had to, I put my uh edit of my uh, manuscript on pause to do an in depth series outline because i'm just like okay i need to make some decisions here because i'm trying to edit things that are going to have long lasting ramifications so i've been gone back and decided to outline everything before i start making changes i feel that um part of the reason i had set the Silver Air aside was because I like needed to outline the whole series and then I needed mm -hmm. to like focus on book one and figure out where book one ended. And I this was just taking too long. And I, I'm like, no, I need to put out a novel or I'm just going to lose all faith in myself. So yeah. here we are with my shifter pit fighter, save her soul, mm -hmm. that we're working on. I won't be working on that quite yet, though. I'm going to be critiquing a short for CB. And then after that, I shall work on revising chapter one. Because I finished chapter one, but um, <clears throat> it needs a revision before I go into chapter two. Because uh, I came upon a problem when I started writing chapter one. I had, like, I knew how chapter one was going to start. I even had, like, the opening paragraph. Oh, it was, it was so chef's kiss. I was in love with it. But, like, 
at some point in the outlining process, I had been like, oh, you know what? Chapter one would probably be better suited if it was from Rochelle's point of view instead of Moxie's. And so I'm sitting here like, I can no longer use this opening paragraph that I had in my brain. And it took, I want to say about half the chapter of me, like forcing my brain to write it for my brain to finally fully switch into, okay, this is Rochelle's chapter. And so the first, the first half of it's very rushed, very messy. It's fine, which is, it's a draft one. So meh, but like after, you know, I got through that and my brain switched, I was like, I already know how to fix it. It's good. We're gonna, we're gonna revise chapter one and then move on to chapter two. Cause, cause y'all that's, that's how I work. <laughs> I'm very ruthless with my writing. Uh, you said CB, and yeah. I thought, huh, what does CB stand for? <laughs> Probably Crash Bandicoot. <laughs> yep, Our good friend, definitely. Crash Bandicoot Ferenz. You know. Osakura did want to do Genjutsu. Oh, you're reading a manuscript. Okay. Oh, not bad. oh, oh, oh. Though that is also very exciting. I love that you're excited about the manuscript that you're reading and critiquing. Oh no, it's fine. You're you're totally good. Crash Bandicoot. <laughs> yes. Next time I see you, I'm gonna be like, yo, Crash, what's up? <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, go ahead, count us down. Alrighty, it is a three, and then it's a two, and then it's a one, and then it's a go. Oh, uh, yes, real quick. To answer Jennifer's question for anybody wondering, uh, Stephanie... I believe she said there was a tower down, so I think her internet is out, but she said she wouldn't be able to make it unless they fixed it. And uh, as, so I assume they have not fixed it yet. But yeah, unfortunately. Uh, happy working.
And we're back. Be surprise. Tina. Welcome, Tina. So, how did everybody do that sprint? I was on mute again, mm. <laughs> as I always am. <laughs> well, this is because we mute, we mute during sprints. So. Yeah, but somehow it always. Am I supposed to unmute myself, or is it does it do it automatically? Oh, you have to unmute I yourself. Thinking, I keep thinking it does it automatically, and so I start Oh, talking. no, it's, <laughs> it's, it's because I mute you when you forget to mute yourself. And so I think because uh, I'm the one who mutes you, you, you have might have thought StreamYard yourself. was the one doing it. <laughs> it is I. I am StreamYard. <laughs> Pulls off mask. <laughs> well, I have Dream to... StreamYard. <laughs> oh, I thought you were talking about my glasses. Uh, they're actually just uh -oh. like my glasses. <laughs> the time. But, uh, yeah, because the right one I took them off. But because, uh, yeah, I have to. I don't have my little ring light to like light my face. So I like turned up the brightness on my computer <laughs> so that you could actually see me. Because otherwise, it'd be like this. Oh, I do the same thing. Like I'm right by the desktop and I'm about to turn it on because the sun has. Gone away. I just let the folks deal with the shadow. <laughs> but see, you're not as bad as uh, mine is because there's like no light in this yeah. corner of the room. <laughs> about to make light. But uh, yeah, turn on. It's fun to be here. I actually have a bit of a headache, but so I got through uh, almost two out of seven now it was six so yeah there's an extra line <laughs> uh pages for the critique and nice. my husband came in here to ask me things so i did 429 words and i made some green tea that definitely had some leaves at the bottom but say I, lobby. This. every year i participate in this like charity zine where you like you draw a shark you submit your drawing of a shark and they get collected and then the money goes to uh to a shark charity and so and the deadline is fastly approaching um because i do this every time i like i sign up in like may and it's always in like july or august that it's due and i sit there like ah oh, yeah I have plenty of time. and then it creeps up on me yep. and i'm like oh no um the thing is, though, is that these last two years, like this this one and the one I did last year, like the idea came to me just like that. And uh, last year's was really good. And this year's, I'm like, this is, I, during that sprint, I managed to get most of the, the sketch down, even though my Apple pencil died. So I had to use my finger. <laughs> <laughs> finger painting. Yay. Yay. But, uh, but yeah, I'm like staring at it now and it, it, it looks good. I'm, I'm happy. I can't show anyone anything until, uh, until the scene is up, but, uh, but yeah, I'll see if I can find a link to last year's cause it's like a dollar or up. Like it's like pay what you can sort of thing. Um, but yes. I'm just getting our next timer ready. Uh, Matt, how did you oh. do? I did a 429 and made tea. Nice. Your green tea with... Um... With leaves at the bottom. Yeah. It's kind of like a cross between the two Lipton's. It's a little bit tea and a little bit soup. <laughs> no, I'm hoping the little bit of caffeine in there wakes me up a little bit. We all know the last sprint's going to be Matt getting ready for bed. So you Oh, yeah. Gotta, for the last sprint, I'm just like the bear from Sleepy Time Tea. I've got like, <laughs> my cap on, my striped pajamas. Uh, yeah, it's a surprise, Tina, eating leftover Greek food. Yeah, I had Ooh, a cheese pie, but I ate it. Surprise, Tina. All the hellos. Yeah. I did absolutely nothing for the first sprint. That's, That's usually how I do. <laughs> I critique two chapters. <laughs> <laughs> I critique two chapters, which was my goal there. Hell yeah. I'm like, I got two pages. Mimi's like, I got two chapters. I'm like, no, it's, it's fine. It's fine. 
<laughs> Maybe they were really small chapters. It's fair. Uh, Six forty-three words for that sprint. Oh yeah. Yeah. After not doing anything for two weeks, this was a needed sprint. All I needed were friends to help me get back in the groove. I mean, that's how I feel. Like that. That's why. That's, that's, that's why my work in chats exist. But <laughs> today, I was like, I feel like I need a work in chat to kick me in the butt to like get to start doing things today. But also, I don't want to interact with humans right now, which is a rarity for me. So I'm like, I'll just wait till tonight when I have to interact with people. Uh, 331 worked out a kink that Sam pointed out when she did a quick critique for the first chapter of my whip. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Happy to help. It only took 31 chapters. <laughs> it's fair. I decided to work on my fanfic and am researching cough, rewatching cough, the changes to Naruto. Got about 10 minutes watched and 100 words on notes to on the changes. Fair. This is the thing. Can you pin it? Do you have pinning power? I don't know how to pin on YouTube. Uh, there's like a little dot, dot, dot. I think I accidentally exited the chat. An ellipse? No. I don't, I don't have pin. No, not an ellipsis. It's like the, the two like dot. No, I mean, yeah, a vertical dot, 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 dot. Oh, uh, verlipsis, I believe, is the technical I'm, I'm going term. with it. I can, I can pop out chat this now. whole time? Oh. Yeah, you can pop out chat. Brilliant. That's what That's I normally beautiful. do. Some I've of been doing weird out shenanigans out with my tabs and windows, trying to make it, like, basically a pop and I could have been yeah. popping it out this whole time. Um, you can also, you can pop out chat and then copy paste the URL to make it a regular tab. <laughs> Good to know. But yeah, if you hover your mouse over the comments, there are like options and stuff. Yeah, my only options are go to channel or remove. Um, so I don't think I have I have the, to wait a little bit pins. because in in front of your dot 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 is like the emoji thing so it's not ha ha I got it oh am I getting blessed with abilities live on stream or are you just doing no. it for me brilliant I'm doing it for you I don't know how to bless with abilities <laughs> I just YouTube's so weird with their permissions uh, also, how did my Google Docs know how to autocorrect auto Kakashi when I misspelled it Kikashi? <laughs> it learned. Uh, that or, I think that's like an actual name name. I was about and, to say. I think yeah, Kakashi is a name name. So Google Docs just not my full name. But Google Docs just doesn't think my that. Google Docs thinks that my maiden name is not a real word, which is fair because it exists because of a typo made. And they like, there's like a Nasser County, Norway, and my ancestors came from Nasser County. And they were like, yeah, Nasset, close enough. So we are a typo. <laughs> what is also a place. <laughs> oh, sorry. This is. Oh, I just, I said, what is a T but a crossed R? Yeah, because cause they were like, well, our name, yeah, Okaluxen, and they're like, yeah, no, you're Nasset now. So. Yeah, my Greek last name came into the family because uh, apparently one of my, like, great, vaguely uh, uncles was uh, quite the traveler. He was, like, island hopping. And one time he was at an island and uh, they were doing the census. And so they came up to him and they were like, name, address. And he was like, I don't live here. <laughs> He's like, I'm leaving. I'm not staying. And they were like, last name. And he wouldn't give it because he was like, I'm, I'm not doing the census. I'm not. So they just put the name of the island they were currently on. <laughs> and then from there, when my dad moved here, he stopped by France on the way. And so my like the version of my last name is actually like uh, Greek translated into French instead of into English. So there's a bunch of extra letters. <laughs> of course, because it's French. Uh, it's French. Yeah, and, uh, yeah it, uh, it makes it a, a fun time. I've, I've definitely done as like a party game, like showed people my last name. I've been like, how do you pronounce this? Hmm. <laughs> <But> <laughs> my, um, my French 
teacher because I took French in high school and he lived in France for a good many years. I don't know if he was from France. I don't think he was from France, but he lived in France for like at least half his life, apparently. And when he saw my last name, he was like, oh, is your last name French? Like Nasse. And I'm like, no, no. it's Norwegian. It's Nasset. And he's like, but but the ending, S-E-T, it's like, you know, in French, it would be say, so it would be Nasse. And I'm like, no, it's Nasset. Like you sit on your ass, A-S-S-E-T, mm. <laughs> pronounced Nasset. <laughs> and he just looked at me and I'm like, sir, you don't leave me to fuck alone. So also, though, my French teacher, so we had to have two um, language credits to graduate, right? And so everybody who took French one needed to take French two to get our second language credit. Can't just like take French one and Spanish one. No, it's got to be two language credits of the same language. Oh, the and same language. Uh, yeah, but my French teacher had wanted to retire. So the year I took French two, oh my God. He like when I was in French one, he was a decent teacher. But when I was in French two, all he kept telling us. Like every time the class got mildly disruptive, he was just like, I don't have to be here, you know, like after mm. this year, I'm retired. So if you don't have your credit, that's on you. You don't get to graduate. And I'm like, sir, like, honestly, you take longer to say this than they did to do their shenanigans. Yeah. And so I'm like, Ugh. I don't. The only reason I passed French too, French too was because the girl who sat beside me, she had already taken French too, but she had enjoyed like French one and two so much that she wanted to take it again. But then, like I said, he was a total asshole his last year of teaching because he just did not want to be there and he was making sure that we knew it. So, but she still had all her French two notes. So I just, mm -hmm. <laughs> I just should have a user note so that I didn't fail because, oh, my man's. My name is a name name, but Google Docs is selectively xenophobic. That's very mm -hmm. true. My French teacher was a mind fudge. What, what does this mean? He knew like six languages fluently and could teach them. He was an Irishman who taught French, Spanish, and Japanese and had lived in <laughs> everywhere. Oh, okay, that's... It's like my grandfather. I don't know if he could do it anymore. But because of when he was in the military and how long he was stationed in Europe, because mm -hmm. of where he was stationed, he could speak like seven or eight languages fluently enough to like get wherever he needed to go. But I don't think he can anymore. Maybe he can. He just doesn't. That's like my math teacher. Or <laughs> Fox said this like my math teacher who threw kids' phones at the wall. What the fuck? I had a geology professor that did something similar. She threw her own phone against the wall because it went off twice during a lecture. That's, That's really <laughs> funny, though. That's her being annoyed at her own phone. That's not breaking other people's property. She told us if our phones ever went off, we, she would do the same, but well, I ne I we guess... never got to test if it was an idle thing because I wasn't about to have my phone go off in her class. I, I guess she's being fair. <laughs> she's, like, she's not being a hypocrite. No, but also to... imagine that that's just like a dummy phone that she like, does that every year. To like I, I wouldn't put it past her. She was such a, a funny lady. But uh, she's like, you know what? I'm a really freak their asses out. If your phone goes off in my class, her phone goes off, throws it at the wall. I don't think I won't do that to yours. Well, because, like, yeah, like, day one, she would always... Because I uh, I adored this woman, so I took all of her classes. But, uh, like, so, like, day one of every course, she'd be like, hey, um, if at any point your phone goes off during my class, they'll never find your body, you know? <laughs> uh, and so th then one day, you know, her phone goes off, and we're all just like, Wow, hypocrite! And she just takes it and shoves it against a wall. She's like, "Try me again." <laughs> uh, he would mess up and go on tangents in the wrong language. It was great when he slipped and cursed in Japanese because my weeb self one hundred percent knew what he was saying. <laughs> That's Dang. 
I once had a supply teacher who like it was a thing of like I think he told me uh during the like uh lunch period that like the teacher fully didn't give him like a curriculum to work off of like she was like suddenly away and they like give and he he didn't have anything to do right and but he was such a cool dude and was like you know I don't am at the supply you guys aren't going to learn today because I have nothing to teach you. So I'm just going to tell you fun stories. And so he just told us fun stories from his life. And the only one I remember is uh, that he like, and it was, it, he, it could have been an advertisement for not smoking because it was his, like, he just had this visceral, like, terrible reaction the first time he tried to smoke a cigarette as a teen. Also, we were 11. And he was telling us Hilarious. a story about how he like, projectile vomited afterwards like and i don't remember if in the story he clarified that like it was just because of the cigarette or it was maybe because of something else but as far as he knew he thought it was because of the cigarette right and so he describes the story and honestly that made me not want to smoke more so than any other psa because he was such a good storyteller and he described it in such detail um but i remember too i was the only one listening and I was also, the, it just happened to be the last to leave out of the class for lunch. And so he turned to me and he was like, I appreciate that you actually listened to my stories. Here's $2. Go get a popsicle because it's really hot out. And so I got one of those like massive, uh, like freezy pops. It was a good day. I'm so uh, dumb that I was, I was waiting for it to be like, hey, thanks for listening. Here's a cigarette. <laughs> I never have smoked. <laughs> uh, so Bella had Bella had a friend whose science teacher was retiring that year and basically did nothing and passed all the students. Uh, I'll speak that over my professor. French teacher. My stats professor in college, he was like, I'm retiring. You guys can cheat on the exams. I don't care. <laughs> He's like, oh, okay, I don't got to answer for shit no more. <laughs> Uh, but my friend needed that information for his degree later on, and my school won't allow him to retake a oh. class in college because he didn't feel he earned the grade. Oh, damn! There though, uh, my AP history teacher loved to wear a feather boa and presented the whiteboard like she's in the Wheel of Fortune in order to get our attention when class got rowdy. I See, I that. love that though. That is a creative <laughs> solution that recaptures students' attention, not just. Oh my god, because he'd go off on those fucking like tangents and then he would go right back into teaching and I would have like tuned him out because I didn't give a fuck about his uh I didn't give a fuck about his tangents about him retiring and so like but by the time I tuned in he was already like ten minutes back into the thing and I'm like ah fuck. Uh um, one time I had a substitute but, teacher, uh I think that this was in elementary school, if I'm not mistaken. It was like fifth grade-ish. But uh, we had a sub, and he put, like, his dirty shoes on our teacher's desk, like, oh. propped his shoes up, and it was just, like, going through her cabinets and I've just, like, reading papers, and, like, he was, e he was, like, eating a sandwich <gasps> while teaching and, like, messily, and... <laughs> a caricature of a bad yeah, yeah. yeah. and so like our, our teacher came in the next day and she was like yeah sub said you guys were fine and we were like we feel like we should tell you the sub wasn't fine like <laughs> we feel like we should go on the sub like our sub sucked man. and my teacher got so mad she was like he was doing what and we're like yeah that's why your desk is a mess he was like a slob with it mild update from my neighborhood chat right so there are yeah. two admins and one of the admins had been the one who was who did the thing she had tagged the other admin which why they're having this discussion publicly i don't know but she had tagged the other admin to let her know that they muted you know she muted and all of that and people can start their own chat or whatever and then the other admin uh tagged her and was like I only saw the one report I figured if they didn't stop uh, after being asked to stop then we could mute or remove them 
And then the other one's all like, um, I'm not asking. I'm muting for seven days. <laughs> She's like, I ain't even deal with that. I'm going to just mute them. And then the second time, they're being removed. Everyone's an adult. People can behave. or just So I'm glad that she has clarified now because I didn't get this from the first met thing. But she has a zero tolerance policy. She's like, you get one strike. You get one chance. And then after that. I'm going to just kick your ass out. You can go. She's like, uh, there's a city group. And the city group is like known for, you know, people just causing all sorts of drama and shit. And she's like, they can go cause their problems there. (laughs) Like not in our neighborhood chat. And I'm like, now that I understand what they're saying better. uh, the, the, The admins. Very great people. I was trying to figure out what this conversation was about. Oh, you weren't here. Okay, so last week, my neighborhood Facebook group, because like all of the neighborhoods or subdivisions in my city, or at least most of them, have a Facebook group of Mm -hmm. some kind, right? It's where you can like safely post yard sales. uh, Mm -hmm. It's like most of them started in 2020 because uh, a lot of like, like the really early one messages in our neighborhood group and stuff were just like, um, does anybody need to go to the grocery store or, Hey, I'm running the store. If anybody who's like old or immunocompromised, uh, let me know. And I'll like pick your groceries up, leave them on the like porch and stuff. And, you know, it's just like really nice. And we have a lot of dogs that get out in the neighborhood. Cause like most of the fences are at a point in their life where they need to be replaced <laughs> and repaired. So for a couple of summers and stuff, it was just my dogs got out again. I swear I'm replacing the fence in a couple of months. And we're all mm-hmm. like, okay. So it's just, you know, when you find someone's dogs and you let them know. Uh, but yeah, just slowly over time, the neighborhood groups have become like used for other things. Like, oh, is anybody babysitting? Or, hey, my kids need play dates and stuff. It's real cute. I like, I like the neighborhood groups. Well, as of last week, they decided we needed a chat room. And then... Over the over the weekend, some dude <laughs> decided to, to like pop off of some on um, some hella takes, mm-hmm. and some other people got real upset about those takes, and they were like, "Admins, could we like do something about this?" And then uh, the admins like read what was going on, and because of the way it was initially worded, I misunderstood. And I thought that they were basically just like, yeah, we're dealing with this. And then, like, after that, people can just deal because I'm not sitting here babysitting a bunch of adults. But I misunderstood. I don't think I'm the only one who misunderstood just because of the way that the other admin spoke. But the. But she just. uh, The first one just clarified that it's basically like. Everybody, like several other people had asked him to stop before they got the admin involved. And the admin's like, look, I'm not asking. I'm going to just mute you for a week. And then if you can't behave after that, I'm going to just remove you. Like this is like we started the chat so that it could be a nice place for people in the community to connect. Like we're not dealing with that. If you want to start drama and bullshit, go to the city group, not our neighborhood one. And I'm like. I love our admins. They're so good. That's like the lady who lived behind us who was harassing us about our dog. And I like, I, I like reported one of her posts and uh, the admin was like, hey, I don't see any actual harassment on this post. And I like told her what had been going on. And she's like, okay, let me go check. She's like, have you tried to talk to her? I'm like, yeah, I, but every time I do, she just ignores me and like talks around me and stuff. So they just they deleted her post and i assume have not allowed her to repost about my dog because literally the only time she posted in the neighborhood chat was just to complain about our dog but here's the thing she would complain about our dog barking when our dog was inside and we weren't even home she was just a tribute like and there's 
Our neighbors on that side have a dog. Our neighbors on that side have a mm-hmm. dog. The neighbors across the street. So many fucking people have dogs. We assume that she was just attributing all the barking in the neighborhood to our dog, especially since we got two dogs and she only ever complained about the one dog barking. And let me tell you, well, we don't have two dogs anymore, but we had two dogs at the time. Uh, just think that every dog is but one dog. Yes. Uh, Jessica said the year before I joined choir, the choir teacher was like psycho and she may, she had a mental breakdown in the middle teaching and started screaming and ran out of the school and never returned. My damn. My fourth grade teacher. Uh, the only thing I remember about my fourth grade teacher is that there was a day when like I was sitting there working on a project and then all of a sudden she just started crying in class and saying that like we were the worst class she ever had and we gave her nightmares and I was like the fuck is going on (laughs) my sister had something similar happen where her whole class was just horrendous to this teacher that's the thing my fourth grade class wasn't that bad uh, my my sister's like yeah we were really bad like we were bad kids (laughs) But uh, this guy qu- told them, he's like, I'm not teaching anymore, and it's your guys' fault. <laughs> and apparently, he went and became a monk. <laughs> See, I don't... Like, if my fourth grade class was really that bad, I would have, like, I don't know. It just felt like it came out of nowhere. I was but, like, hey, I think really you're projecting a little bit right now. I don't I think do. you're mad at us. I think you have something going on at home. Like, the worst I... that... The worst that I remember happening and stuff is we got in trouble for trading Pokemon cards, which, which, funny, funny thing. This year, cards. this year I got messages from the children's teachers. Um, it was a general message to all of the the parents in the grade to make sure our children don't bring Pokemon cards to school because they were having a problem with like. <laughs> Pokemon oh. card training and they didn't want it or trading and they didn't want anyone's stuff to get stolen or anything. And I'm like, Pokemon card trading is still an issue here in the fourth grade. I have 15 some now years I have two later. <laughs> I have two great stories to tell you guys. Uh, okay, you yeah. can tell me one and then I have to like catch yes. up. Okay, Fox, so maybe I should... uh, first one is pretty quick actually. I remember one of my very like earliest memories is being in kindergarten and being asked to remake a craft which was a little brooch by the like teacher's assistant who was like i met her like later like i had like she like stopped teaching and started teaching again in my middle school and i remember being like how is that the same woman she seems nice Mm -hmm. because she was just like so stern right and so she makes me remake the brooch and she like pulled me aside from the class makes me sit at the table watches me the entire time right and i remember little little four-year-old me being so anxious about it i'm being like i must have done something wrong i didn't make it good you made it my too mo- good she didn't trust you did it didn't she my no what happened was is that my mom told me later that she had accidentally washed it. Like she had put it on a shirt, accidentally washed the shirt, it got ruined. And so she asked them, hey, like, I really liked it. It was really cute. Can you get her to remake it, oh. right? And, but they didn't tell me that's what happened. They didn't tell me anything. It was literally like a police interrogation. Like they might, might as well have had a light. Um, <laughs> Her mom's like, it was so cute. I'd love another one. And they're like, yeah, we got this. What did you do? <laughs> yeah, she didn't tell me until I was like, you know, like in my teens. And I was like, I remember being so scared. <laughs> like, <laughs> Shines a lamp in your face. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Bella said there's a teacher fifth grade on YouTube she created a whole money system in her class gave money when the students did different jobs some pay more and they can pay for toys and snacks teachers budgeting to damn or teachers uh, I had a teacher try that once it lasted about a week and a half and it <laughs> ended when kids were using the money to bribe kids to get into trouble <laughs> So, See, say, we, a great idea in theory, but we did that in, depends uh, on the class. In sixth grade, and I was, I was pretty rich. 
I did have a, I did have a fifth grade teacher rip my assignment apart because I turned it. What the fuck? <laughs> Your teacher's like, I'm gonna I'm be so Gordon so right now. <laughs> I am loving the drama in the neighborhood chat, Sam. Bro, everything in the chat was like going fine. People were talking about their home businesses. They started talking about like some people here homeschool and stuff. So they were talking about different homeschooling thing. And then this one dude was like, the, like started talking about homeschools because of some issues with like the public school and then went off on some completely unrelated issues. And I'm like, sir, what the fuck? I'm going to see if my condo complex has a Facebook group. And I'm going to try to convince people that there's a ghost that lives here. <laughs> Do it, man. I'm gonna be like, anyone else see the hat man? <laughs> and they're like, yeah. the hat man. I'm like, yeah, he stands by the pool and looks into our window. Oh my yeah. god. We also have like uh we've got like the regular neighborhood chat, and then there's also uh the neighborhood watch. Mm. Uh has a chat now. Oh, there's like three neighborhood pages. There's the neighborhood, the neighborhood watch, and then the neighborhood business page, which the neighborhood business page is where like if your teenager has a lawn mowing thing, they can post yeah. there that they mow lawns and stuff. And it's like a safer way for, well, safer way for your teenager to like get lawn mowing jobs instead of going door to door. Uh, yeah, I'm before her because my teacher had like four choir teachers in two years or so. Or my school had four choir teachers in two years or so. The teacher bought the choir these awful crushed velvet shiny dresses. We called them the trash bags. Aww. I stay out of neighborhood chats. Have I told the story funny. before about the neighborhood chat prank that me and my now roommate like almost did but didn't? Not yet, but let me catch up on yeah, chat yeah. and then you can. Uh, my third grade teacher got triggered by the big bell necklace I wore around the holidays. Red ribbon, giant bell, you know? Yeah. I, I, well, I know the bell type. She used to stand me up in front of the class and tell the other children she was disappointed. I was the only gifted child in her class while also scolding me every day. What the fuck? It sucked being stood in front of the class for her lectures. Uh, but also the class was horrible about her behind her back. Well, I mean, like, if she was doing that stuff, I can't blame children for hating her behind her back. Her name was Mrs. Rogers. <laughs> we did that in Sunday school when I was a child, the fake money thing. Find an old raggedy hat after you've asked enough about the hat man. Leave yep. it out somewhere. Yeah, just start a whole thing. <laughs> All right. Uh, Tina, what was your other story? Yeah. That you'd oh, wanted? yes. Speaking of Pokemon trading, um, I was... Uh, <laughs> Like, when I was uh, 10 and my sister would have been around 7 or so, um, Yu-Gi-Oh! was really big. Like, the specifically, well, the show, but also the, the cards, right? Um, yeah. And uh, <laughs> my sister, there was this boy uh, who, in her class, who had a crush on her. Um, and his whole thing was that he would bully her. You know, it was that classic, like, sure. oh, he, you know, bullies because he likes you sort of thing, right? Mm -hmm. um, and she she did two very hilarious things to him. And they actually ended up being uh, friends after the second one. But the first thing she did was she conned him out of a blue eyes white dragon by trading Wait. him out of the car. <laughs> and then his mom called my mom, and my mom had to stand there and try to convince him to give it back. And my sister is, like, very good at, like... Um, uh, like winning arguments is the thing, <laughs> and so it was. I remember sitting there like we were in the midst of playing a game too. <laughs> um, and the second thing she did is uh, he came up and tried to grab her on uh, on the playground. And I remember I was at like the very top of the playground, looking down at them. And my it was just us and my dad. Um, and the thing is, is that my dad had put us into like uh, karate, right? Because uh, my school had a thing where it was like the local karate school had done a deal where it was like, you get the first couple classes free at school, and then you like, get a discount to join. And my dad was like, you guys, and, you know, we both enjoyed it. Um, so <laughs> this kid came up to my sister and tried to grab her. And so she fully flipped him <laughs> over her shoulder. <laughs> and after that, they became friends. <laughs> <laughs> And I remember too, actually, it was it was us 
my dad and the principal who had conveniently turned around the other way. That's right. No, I didn't see that. <laughs> okay, Amazing. so what did what did you and your roommate almost do to your almost do? Yes. Almost do. Cat here. So uh, our neighborhood chat uh, when we were growing up, we were like 15, 16 for this. Uh, but there was a Facebook group for our neighborhood, and it was you know filled with drama and stuff. So we wanted to join. Like, make a fake account and start drama on there. Excuse me as I feel my age, because you had a neighborhood Facebook account at 15, yeah. 16. But we were like, we should make a fake account and go in there and stir up trouble. And we did make the fake account, and we did get accepted into the group, but we ended up never actually posting anything. But what uh, we really wanted to do, though, to really cause trouble, is uh, what people do on there a lot is be like... Hey, uh, I have this um, desk, or I have this like lawn furniture or whatever that I'm trying to get rid of. Uh, just uh, I, I'm giving it away for free. Just come by, pick it up. But what we wanted to do is drive up to people's houses in the neighborhood, take pictures of their lawn furniture, and then post it in the <laughs> Facebook group and be like, "Yeah, just giving this away. Come pick it up." I'm not home. Just swing by and grab it. It's fine. <laughs> oh Just then watch the chaos unfold. But we didn't do that because we told our parents and we're like, isn't that a good idea? And they're like, pretty sure it's a crime, actually. <laughs> they're like, we're pretty sure that's illegal. So like, yeah, no. but, but I think you're telling us about his crimes that you want to commit. And we're like, ah, all right. <laughs> you're like, well, when you put it that way. Uh, we had a new guy move to the area and single-handedly tear the local Facebook group apart. There's another, but the one that didn't require approval to post, it died a long hard death. <laughs> the new guy was hilarious. P or the new guy was hilarious. P.S. It was a long, it was long-time locals that ruined things. Oh, those bastards! <laughs> Tiny crimes. Tiny crimes. <laughs> Look. It I wasn't the one stealing stuff. I was just convincing you other people to unwittingly tricking. steal things. You, you were tricking innocent bystanders <laughs> into stealing stuff. Uh, did you guys hear about the trend on TikTok of students vandalizing school? It was going on while my sister was in middle school. Hasn't vandalizing uh, the school always been, been a couple. little bit of thing? Well, well there's a girl no, in middle school who tried not to set the school in on this. fire. So okay. basically what happened was uh, it was a TikTok trend to record yourself vandalizing the school, mm. like breaking the bathroom. Gotcha. Sink. gotcha. Like, like we're not talking little innocent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, vandalizing. Like carving into the stall. Yeah, kind of thing. that's, that's sure, just sure. really going to fuck with the janitor's day. Yeah. Which, Still not okay to do, but like at least if they figure out who you know spray painted anything, they could try to have the student deal with it. No, we're talking mm. about like some like, serious hardcore property damage. Yeah, and uh, there was um, I, I, I have a couple teachers in my feed, and this one teacher was like, some people send like stories into her, and so she like recreates the stories as skits, mm -hmm. and she'll you know like say if the story was sent into her or not. And she had this one story sent into her of this this student who was like they were talking about the trend, and they're like, well, why do you care if like we break them because like it doesn't it something about how it doesn't like affect you or come out of your pay or something. And she's like, uh, yeah, actually like if the repairs come out of the school budget and if the school budget like runs low, then they'll cut my pay. And he was like, oh. also like, what do you mean? Why do you care that I did property <laughs> damage to the school? Even if it didn't, that's kind of like a, I don't know, man, property damage is bad. It's like it kind of showed that some of the mentality of the teens, they're like trying it's it's their like weird way of trying to like stick it to the man or yeah. like protesting <laughs> over certain things. But it's like breaking the bathroom sink is not going to achieve 
what you think it's going to achieve. But yeah, because of that, that trend has like become a trend like two, three times. And I've gotten messages from my kids, teachers. That's just like, please talk to your children about the ongoing <laughs> internet trends or I like vandalism so that they do not. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, children, you know that this is not a good thing, right? And they're like, yeah, <laughs> I'm like you wouldn't do this, right? And they're like, no. And I'm like, okay, good. And like one of my children was like, it was like, uh, basically, do you know how inconvenient that would be not being able to wash my hands? <laughs> like, that one takes after me. It's That's like, also how I was like a kid. <laughs> like, why aren't you going to break the bathroom sink? Because it's wrong. No, because. I need to wash my hands. Why would I break the sink? Breaking the sink is unsanitary. I won't be doing that. Thank you. <laughs> Only vandalize practically. Yeah, recording themselves doing it. See, that's the other thing. Like, they record it and they post it. And so it's like... I mean, we're know. talking about 14-year-olds. That uh, frontal lobe isn't super yeah, the, well like... developed. Look. Decision making teenagers, processes aren't great. <laughs> teenagers are incredibly impulsive creatures by nature. So, and I mean, uh, it is getting attention. It's only a crime if you get caught doing it. FYI, don't tell your parents that's what you want to do. Right. Well, it's probably for the honestly, like that's when Matt's frontal lobe was not fully. But also, developed. like, bless my parents because. It was one of those things where they're like, look, we are aware you are a teenager, and we are okay with some mischief. See, <laughs> So I would run my mischief by them <laughs> a lot of the time. Be like, so I want to do this little bit of mischief. And they're like, that's not illegal, so I guess that's okay. <laughs> See, like, stealing soap containers, TPing the cafeteria and stuff, that's what I would expect when, sure. like, you know, if somebody decided to do some sort of, like, prank prank the school trend back in my day no these TikTok trends they're, they're a lot more than what i expected in, uh, uh, in my high school always justify that it isn't hurting anyone that matters well the other thing with like the teen trends like for the teenagers doing it and stuff it's like they it's just one of those things where they they get caught up in it, right? And yeah. they get caught up in the logic and the justification. But, like, once somebody sits down and actually talks to them, uh, a lot of them, like, that, that's when they think about it. And that's mm -hmm. when their, like, logic kicks in and stuff. And they're like, oh, you, like, have yeah. a point. But then, think. like, it's, it's really fascinating to see, like, the different age groups and stuff. Because this is predominantly, like, you know, an upper middle school slash lower high school issue, right? Because, mm -hmm. like, the older teens, they're kind of like, yeah, no, breaking the school sinks is stupid. Maybe a bad idea. And, and then, like, you know, the elementary school kids, they're just like, but for why? I wash yeah. my hands with that. Mm -hmm. But, like, it's, it's that area where... Uh, cause hormone spikes and everything as their as puberty is freshly hitting and stuff really fucks with their their judgment processing. Well, because that's the thing, it's like everyone wants to say that like teenagers are stupid, and it's like it's not that they're right. stupid, it's just they need to be told to slow down. It's yeah, like, wait, it's... hold on, think you can't just always do the first thought that pops into your head. You need to run through some pros and cons before you act. Yeah, it's it's literally just their like impulses. Yeah. My all right, all right, Jessica, this is your <laughs> one free warning. All right. I am a a rebellious bitch who doesn't do what nobody <laughs> does. And I am a teenager yeah. in this aspect. And B <laughs> this is a social, this is a more social stream. Mm -hmm. I run for about three hours. We do three sprints of 30 and 220s. Uh, I will be, I, I normally do the second sprint between the 150 and the two hour mark. There's like, there is a pattern to it. So, but like when anybody starts saying like, should we sprint or something? I'm like, I don't think I need to sprint for the rest of the knife, to be honest. I could just chill. <laughs> so. Yeah, we could just chat and you can just work while we chat. <laughs> um, right. And also, if you don't tell be me, too I sassy, should... Tina, only I can be sassy to chat. That's my job. <laughs> that's why i said this, this, this is, is why you gave me the wrench 
<laughs> no, it's not. The fox isn't allowed to sass people. Only I am. Oh, by the way, also, Fox said that uh, Matt needs to age a few years for fairness sake. Four or five years will do. <laughs> Wait, why do I need to age? Fox also birthday. said, don't worry, Jessica. I'll end Sam when necessary. Bitch, you ain't gonna do nothing. <laughs> what do I need to age for? I'm the right age. <laughs> And Fox also he agrees with the old folks that social media is in fact the devil. Um, yeah, some schools started having teachers posted outside the bathrooms because it, it got so bad. The main reason my school it. had that was just for oh, uh, vaping purposes. Mm. Uh, there's a teacher on Teachers Off Duty podcast, and one of the teachers had a toilet stolen from her school. And no Hell one knows yeah. who did it. That's the that's the kid who's yeah. who knows how to get away with shit. Not yeah, the like some kids thing, still like, have vandalism that bad. Stealing the school's toilet a little legendary. <laughs> a little legendary. Like I mean, come on, uh, you stole a toilet. Stupid is an unwillingness to learn. Ignorance is common in youth. They don't know how would they know? Yeah, exactly. Like that. That's the other thing. You know, teenagers are at. Teenagers are out of, like, one of the three, um, see, there's, there's four puberties in your life, mm -hmm. um, and teenagers are at one of the three puberties where you are overconfident in your knowledge and life experience, right? The first one is when you're a toddler. That's, like, mm -hmm. commonly referred to as the terrible twos, um, because that's, like, that's that's technically your first puberty it's the first major like if i remember correctly it's the first major hormonal spike where a bunch of changes happen at once not just quick changes but a lot of them and so that's that's why the terrible twos are often referred to as that way and then the next one is the onset of adolescent puberty and with adolescent puberty that's when like they think they know everything and they're confident that they know everything and the decision making processes of their brains are inhibited by all the things. Yes, babe? You going to bed? All right, well, come over here. I'll turn the... Yep. Yes, I turned it off. Oh, my God. If you don't come over here so I can continue my conversations. <laughs> now go to bed. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I just spent a whole weekend with you and the children. <laughs> but um and then uh let's see oh yeah that's that's when all of that and then the th uh, like the third puberty is actually your like early to mid 20s which is why like a lot of early 20 year olds are all like I know what the fuck I'm doing when they like go into their jobs like in fresh out of college and stuff they're like yeah no I got this but then like by the time they hit 24 25 26 they're like I don't know how to adult I have never adulted in my fucking life what is this I'm being the called out right now <laughs> <laughs> the funny thing is is that like they also line up with uh, parts of the astrological calendar too like the terrible twos happens right around your Mars return. Um, and then I believe it's the Saturn return is when you're, it's like the end of your twenties. Uh, and I could have sworn there's one around your teen years too, but I don't remember off the top of my head. Uh, and, the, and then the, uh, the final, like the, the final mental puberty, it's like the final time you're, you go through a growth spurt before like, everything starts shrinking <laughs> with mm -hmm. old age and that is your early 30s it's why when a lot of people hit 30 or their early 30s they're suddenly like i am so much more comfortable with life and everything because it's like it's your yeah. final stage of evolution after that you're just like you are who you are pretty much unless uh you know major shit happens that changes you but yeah so that's like that's your four mental puberties which like come with varying uh, ways of physical puberty too. Like I hit 30 and I went from being able to wear an extra small and a small to um, wearing a large now. 
But yeah, and and also keep in mind that this is like I am not a professional in anything <laughs> except uh-huh. momming. <laughs> And, but I, I do like observe people and I've done a lot of research and stuff into this, but always fact check, especially because I have migraines and brain fog. And so always, always double check the facts and stuff. But if you feel called out, that's a, I'm sorry. Jupiter returns in your, in your preteens. So there is like, uh, yeah, Mars, uh, Jupiter, and Saturn. Teenagers are where those intrusive thoughts aren't yet blocked by. Is this a good idea or will it get me into trouble? And do I care if I'm in trouble? I had too much anxiety for that. (laughs) We're so, all those three questions worry about constantly. (laughs) I felt 28 for a long time. Now I'd say I feel 32. That perfect age, Matt. You lie. Saturn returns around the age of, okay. Of 27. I had a past life reading done once that said this is the first of many lives I've lived where I lived past age 27. I'm an open-minded skeptic. I I feel open-minded skepticism is a perfect place to be. But I am also very Virgo. And that's a very Virgo thing to see. If any of my past lives wanted to live past teenager, they would have had to have a better appendix than me. Because... (laughs) Yours ruptured then? It didn't rupture. I we caught it before it blew up. But uh Okay, so you're saying like the the medical technology before yeah, yeah. now. The medical technology. <laughs> I'm sitting here like Matt, you've lived past teenage years though. <laughs> yeah, but like past Matt's would have needed the medical oh. technology of uh, appendectomies. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, yes. It. It's it a is. very scor. Is a very Scorpio thing to do. It's especially a very Scorpio thing to like be completely skeptical until like certain things start lining up, and then like it's kind of like, oh well, I guess there is something to this. Also, stuff like that much. might not necessarily be your sun. <laughs> it might be your other planets. So like, look into like um, birth charts. And stuff mm-hmm. and they'll tell you like the full uh, all, all of the Scorpios yeah. that I know were like the Zodiac and stuff is bullshit until because like Scorpio is painted in such a terrible mm-hmm. negative light but then you start showing them positive Scorpio things and they're like so I need a scorpion tattoo <laughs> and <laughs> I love Scorpio so I do my, too. Uh, my roommate is a Scorpio and us pair of water signs we get up to all sorts of trouble <laughs> Scorpio Scorpio Libra I think yep uh, yeah. I... Oh, the double Scorpio too. Yeah. Also, see if anybody called me out now, they'd be like, "Sam, you said we were gonna do it at the 150." I'd just be like, "Listen, you're right, but <laughs> you said one, between 150 and uh, two hours. We're, we're I know at, we're in between. Yes, just, uh, me, me. I'm like I'm right in your comment oh, at the moment." <laughs> Hello. Scorpios are often hypersexualized, so I don't always mesh with the vibe I see about it. That's, um, that's fair. Yeah. I, for me, I there feel like a Scorpios actually. <laughs> well, I feel like it's it's just a misread of the passionate thing because all Scorpios mm-hmm. I know are passionate. It's just not all of them are passionate about sex. It's like, also a thing of like so. uh, the signs are associated with different parts of the body as mm-hmm. well, and Scorpios is the private parts so yeah. but not the, the the chest actually that's me that's uh cancer where are virgos associated with what part of the I body don't remember indigestion in my head let me oh fantastic <laughs> yeah, we're, we're the ibs <laughs> sign good for us i meant to say the intestines but indigestion also where are the intestines also just the, the abdomen just, yeah, yeah that just like the abdomen but not the chest area so like that, from your yeah, stomach, up here is cancer your, and then uh below is everything uh, Virgo. has to deal with digestion <laughs> is is where we're at we're just all about that gut health gang okay. yeah uh Sleep well and my husband and i are also a virgo scorpio pair <laughs> just oh, nice. says, i meant to say digestion but yeah we're the heartburn uh sign <laughs> <laughs> All right, Tater Town is down to our sprint. All righty. Three, two, one. Let's go.
And we're back. We lost a Matt. He was tired. I know. I also love the um, the paint timer. I'm still on mute. <laughs> well, no, now I'm done. <laughs> what did you say? I, I didn't hear you. Oh, uh, I was on mute. It's fine. I keep forgetting that I'm supposed to turn it off myself, uh, and then it no. does it automatically. Um, I I heard that you said something. I just didn't hear what you said. Oh, uh, I said I didn't get to say good uh, good night to Matt. I almost said goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> goodbye, <laughs> Malamu. How did everybody do that? <laughs> I was sitting here like there's a question that I ask everybody after a sprint and I can't remember what it is. I am. <laughs> I'm old as fuck, but I don't know if I have mom vibes to people my daughter's age. <laughs> I don't know, I've had mom vibes since I was 12, so. <laughs> when I was in my early 20s, I thought I acted as an old soul too, but then I hit 25 and realized that I didn't actually know what that meant at all. Uh, hold on. I thought that there was just a couple messages up, but no. So we just go with our cut. I try to live by that, Heather, yes. Oh, that was about um, okay. what body part Sagittarius is. Sagittarius is the head. Or Sagittarius oh, is. Yeah. Ruler of the liver, sacrum, lumbar vertebrae, hips, and thighs. Sacrum. Sacrum? Sacrum? Sacrum. It's, um, yeah. it's part of the hip bones, isn't it? It's like the middle part of your hip bones. Yeah, yeah. It's like, you know how your hip bones are oh, kind of shaped like a bowl? And then there's like I just heard you. I thought you said hit box and my gamer brain's trying hit to be box. like, what part of me is that? <laughs> my daughter would agree. I feel like it I is. should spend some time with Matt because I am 22, almost 23, and I act like I am in my mid-30s. <laughs> Bella. Yeah. I love you, dear, but no, you act like somebody in your early 20s. <laughs> Which is not a bad thing, I thought Dina. we were being sassy on stream. <laughs> That's not what I said. <laughs> I said only I can be sassy to chat sometimes, depending on what we're being sassy about. Um, also, I was well, not intending. Sassy, I get sassy. I it's was not intending to be sassy at that particular point in time. I was just letting Bella know that to me, she acts like somebody in her early twenties. I just, I don't feel good today, y'all, and so I, I feel like because I don't it's feel just... good, I sound ten times bitchier than I mean to, and therefore I well, apologize. To everyone. It's also too that like but... I, I know you didn't mean it sassily, but I laughed because like usually when people do say it, they mean it sassily. <laughs> And so, no, that's why I'm surprised you said it. There's nothing wrong with acting no, your age. There's nothing wrong. <laughs> just, nothing. just people usually yeah. aren't that blunt about it. But I, I love you and how blunt you are. So, uh, my daughter is 26, but I don't feel out of place with diverse ages. Teens are draining. <laughs> that's fair. Teens are like oh, they got so much energy. Well. We're making blanket general statements. So, you know, obviously not everybody fits in these, but yeah. When I was in my early 20s, I thought I acted as an old soul too. Okay, so this is, yeah, all right. Wait, also, it turns out when you read chat in order instead of backwards, things make sense. Who <laughs> thunk? Uh, I just need to save this paint tire. Oh, yeah, the paint tire was super cool. Oh, no, AO3, why? Bella had shit to do. How dare you? My pal just sent me a thing about AO3 being down. What's going on with it? I don't know. Also, I posted in the chat fight, AO3? a uh, diagram of like the different body parts that uh, 
like are associated with different signs. So you guys can look and see uh, which ones, because I do not have them memorized. I just remember Aries has had, it usually goes from like top to bottom of like the order of the signs. No writing done, but I got ready for bed, talked to my roommate for a bit, did a tarot reading, and finished off reading a book. Awesome. I talked with a couple of people, no writing done. I That's also all I did. So. I did some, oh, some how old do I act? Ava, you act in my age grouping, which is anywhere between 30 to 50. <laughs> <laughs> so take that how you will i feel like people like because as you get older your age grouping gets bigger mm -hmm. and i feel like early millennial to gen xers we all act the same age <laughs> like, fair we Honestly. all act the same age so yeah it's it's not that I'm no filter. I would normally say these things in the yeah. words that I would say them. It's just yeah. when I don't feel good and low energy Sam I, to me feels like I sound like super bitchy Sam, and that's not it. I just don't you, feel good. I have low you energy. Don't sound bitchy. So. It's just that you you just get more blunt. I feel like there's a difference. You know what I mean? <laughs> No, see, that's the thing, though. I feel like I, I'm using the same words I would use otherwise, which is what would make you blunt. It's just because I'm saying them with a different tone of voice than I usually would, it feels more blunt, which feels bitchier. I guess I, I would normally the word I'm looking for. Maybe like I, more I would normally I would normally say things like, no, Bella, you act like you're in your early 20s. But like it would, it would sound more like that, more conversational and like lighter. Whereas like... I was like, Bella. <laughs> so I, I just feel like it's how I'm, I'm projected. I feel like I act young despite my age. Uh, I don't remember how old Mimi is right now. <laughs> Mimi, I feel like you act your like mid to late 20s. So take that how you will. Yeah. And I'm like, I vaguely remember that I am the baby of uh, the three of us. And I was like, I feel like you act my age like <laughs> Eva now my perception of old people may be a little skewed because of my grandparents because keep in mind my grandmother hits me with a shoe when I'm beating her at Mario Kart so <laughs> that's the <that's> old <laughs> iconic <people. laughs> um but like I, I don't know you just you don't feel like you act 74 to me same Sam, mom vibes, and I was reading an AO3 story, but when that went down, I started working on fanfic. And P.S. It took two years learning to act my age, so the fact that you think that is better. Well, awesome. Uh, AO3 said something, something, something about their DDoS being attacked, but I have no idea what that Oh, means. it might actually be, um, like, AI scraping. Ah, Because okay. I think DDoS has something to do with that. I'm not entirely sure, though. I am not a computer right. expert. We're going to Google. DDoS. Uh, distributed denial of service attack is a malicious attempt to disrupt the normal traffic of a targeted server, service, or network by overwhelming the target or its surrounding infrastructure with a flood of internet traffic. Hmm. So it could be like a bot attack. I was about to say like a bot situation. Acting my age took time to learn. My mom has said for the last 10 years that I always acted much older than I am. Fair. You don't sound itchy when you're well rested. I feel like my, my tone of voice sounds a lot peppier. <laughs> also, you can do a swear. It's just that I will probably have to approve your comment. <laughs> That's fine. She'll approve it. Yeah, I will. I like the swears. It also is very funny when I'm like in the chat and I see things come up because it also understands like when you put like a asterisk instead of letters, it still flags and it comes to me. Um, but, <laughs> it's uh, like I see this censorship. Yeah, it's like I know that there's supposed to be a U there between the F and the C. <laughs> Mimi said I was told the same thing that I always acted older than I was, which only meant that I didn't have as much energy as other kids, and that I was more obedient than they were too. Relatable. Have, there's like some studies and stuff on like 
girls specifically between the ages of like 10 and I want to say 17 or 18 and like acting older than our age and it like goes whole back to thing that you know like girls mature faster than boys and a bunch of other stuff and like depending on who says it to you you have to be really careful about it because like it can be a type of grooming to make you yeah. feel as if you're more mature or like you're not you know other girls and stuff now with that said i know bella said that like her mom is the one who told her that so yeah. i don't that's that's not what i'm saying there it's just this this whole yeah. reminded me of that thing yeah so yep younger than my age <laughs> I remembered I was the baby. <laughs> My mom is 78. Well, do you feel like you, well, that's not a fair question to be honest. It's like, do you feel like you act like your mom? It's like, well, I act like my grandmother. A therapist question. <laughs> like, let, me, let me get a notebook. Just, do you so feel like you, you act today? like your mother? Like I have some things in common with my grandma. So, and that's not because I act like I'm in my 70s. It's just because my grandmother helped raise me. So I have some personality traits in common with her. Uh, but yeah. Yeah, some sort of attack on American sites. I forgot we were talking about websites for a second. I was oh, like, yeah, where did yeah, this come thing. from? <laughs> I'm concerned. See, that's the other thing. It's like, what is acting our age? Because it's, it's like this arbitrary thing too of where mm -hmm. it's like people think you know like once you hit certain ages and everything people are just like uh you know you're not supposed to do this or you're not supposed to do that it's mm -hmm. like oh well, can you act your own age and stuff like no i will read comics until i die i'm not uh, going to grow out of it there was this podcast i listened to that had an episode and i can't remember what it was called i think it was called like the life escalator or something like that where like they were talking about in the context of like queerness how like um a lot of the like sort of like uh stepping stones in in life you know like getting a house getting married da, 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 are like not like accessible to queer people or like have mm -hmm. not been in the past and like how that affects like you know how you feel about like your age and life trajectory and all that sort of stuff i think it was called the life escalator i am not entirely sure it was a long while ago that i watched that or listened to that podcast uh Ava, adults say others are childish when they are triggered and toxic, but they tell children to grow up. Free therapy and star sign readings tonight. We act our upbringing, our traumas, and our opportunities. Yes. I feel like people in their 30s have this confidence and self-acceptance that I lack, so therefore I don't act like my age. Uh, it's, it's like I said earlier, um, it's like that's your general puberties and stuff, but different things can like cause delays in like your final one. And also, um, you don't. And especially for a lot of people in our generation who are healing from general, like a lot of people in our generation, our parents started doing the work to like the latchkey generation started doing the work to not be their parents. For better or for worse and so now like our generation is taking even bigger and stronger steps to that and so it just kind of it, it might take us a little bit longer like i feel like i didn't actually hit my uh well i feel like i hit my um my 30s my my 30s puberty actually in my mid to late 20s so I feel like I did a lot of work there that a lot of people do in their early 30s. So like everybody's thing is different. Uh, I was a teen mother and I'm an old mom. No matter your age, people will say it's not the best if it isn't what they did or wanted to do. Yes, exactly. And mm -hmm. my mom, my mom had me when she was 15 going on 16, right? And so for my mom, I feel like she wasn't able to be a teenager, right? And then so after my baby sister hit 18 and move out the house and my mom didn't have kids or anything anymore, 
my mom became um uh my mom basically went through her uh, second puberty, or not second puberty, but my mom basically just went through her adolescence and became a teenager, like after all her kids were moved out the house. She started reading uh, manga a little, well, more she watched K-dramas, and then she would read the manga that the K-dramas were based on and stuff. So, like, my mom's living her best adolescence. She's into K-pop and all of that. And I love that for her. I know, so do I. Like, it was, it was kind of funny because, you know, like, I did conventions and stuff since I was a teenager. And then, like, my mom would call me and she's like, hey, have you heard of Hanakimi? And I'm like, yeah, I, I own Hanakimi. It's in my house. And she's like, well, I was watching this K-drama that was apparently based on that. And I was like, what is it now? Who's your favorite character? And, like, we got to, like, bond over that. Oh, yeah. So. I bet I could get my dad to play Hades. He's, he loves the video game. Life growing up in maturity is not a straight line, nor is it a thing that everybody follows. That perfectly. was also what I was going to say about uh, Mimi's comment about like not feeling like you know uh, as confident as you know quote unquote should be at thirty. Is like there's a plenty of thirty year olds out there who are not like you know like different varying levels of confidence, right? Because that applies to all ages, right? Even you know I said that whole thing about like I was a very anxious kid, so like I was not like nearly as impulsive as like your average kid you know what i mean mm -hmm. i turned 23 in a few days the real event that proved this was my 21st birthday all cousins and siblings had a wild b-day and had three drinks remember all of them and one was a shot uh that's the other thing like you know your big milestones they're so arbitrary they're like oh well you're an adult It'll in the USA, they're like, oh, well, you're an adult at 18. But, like, you can't drink. You can't rent a car. Depending on the hotel, you can't rent a room. <laughs> then you turn 21, and they're like, hey, you can drink. But you're still not an adult adult because you can't rent a car or a hotel room. So, yeah. Uh, the numbers are a bit closer in Canada. It's like it's 19 to drink. Oh, 19 to drink. Wait, yeah. What about to, to rent stuff? Here, it's 25. With cars, I think it's 19. I'm not, I, don't, I, I don't drive. I don't know. Um, and My hotel bad. Rooms, That's very fair. I'm sitting here like, I remember renting a hotel room when I was like 20 once. See, but it I'm depends. Like, I don't it think depends they on that. It depends on where you rent and why you're renting. There's like some hotels and motels and stuff that you just have to be 18. But like if you want to get a really nice one or like you want to go to a convention, some conventions will be like, yeah, no, adult 25 or older has to be present. And you're like, but I'm 20. And they're like, mm, not 25. The place I stayed at was pretty nice, but I'm like, they didn't ask for ID, so maybe they weren't that kind of place, you know? Because yeah. uh, I, I definitely, uh, like I've always looked uh, younger and like people always guess young when they baby uh, face. Yeah. yeah, big face. My mom uh, advocated for having the classic 21st B day so you can learn your limits be without being judged by others. We also have ours at home or a bar where we know the owner and bartenders. Fair. Oh, my dad just kept trying to give me wine when I turned like <laughs> 13. Um, we learned don't like wine, but <laughs> except sangria. Uh, yeah, sangria. I didn't go get my updated ID slash driver's license until almost two months past my 21st. Went to a bar once that year. Fair. Love that for your mom. Yes. I've been a gamer since my daughter was young. I game less now, but she was never a gamer. I fit into what was a cooler parent, though. Nice. Uh, my early 30s were my darkest years, yo. If you're happy, just enjoy whatever age you are. Yes. Mm -hmm. Agreed. You can gamble, serve in the military, sign a contract, but no renting a car. I put my scribbles into notes on my iPad, organizing my outline for my sub stack much better. Pro tip, U-Haul in similar places may rent to under 25 in some states. If you really need a vehicle, <laughs> good to know. That's so true. I'm the oldest in the room, but that's okay. Fair. All right. Uh, do we want to do one more sprint? Because we normally do three, but I'm kind of 
kind of not feeling good today, y'all. So are we yeah, good with stopping I'm, here? I'm honestly good with stopping as well. All right. Which means I gotta, I, oh God, I gotta you pull gotta up my outros. Your outro. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> I gotta pull up my, my notes that I do in Notion. Yeah. My computer is having a fit today. Well, specifically, Firefox is having a fit today. He don't want to load. But I have to go because I'm the only other one. I'm like, can I? Oh, <laughs> I'll oh, talk to chat was... while you're looking. Don't worry. You're good. Oh, we're almost uh, there. <laughs> you can get hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt at 17, but you can't drink. So... This got dark, y'all. This got dark. <laughs> yeah. Y'all are Those the times sugar. I'm like, I'm lucky though to live in Canada. <laughs> no, I lost my slipper. I'm not sure how I lost my I... slipper. My slippers were right here. There, there it is. If I remember also, correctly, my college I just want to was show like... you all my slippers. See my slippers? Oh, cute! Yeah. Also, my college was like 24000 for all four years. It was university, actually. Weed is awesome. For me, fancy Spanish degree. I don't actually... Weed Which... might be 19 here, too. I'm not actually Which sure. Which I want it on record. Months. I want it on record. I do think alcohol and weed should be 21 and up. I actually think maybe it would be better for them to be 25 and up, but that is just because they are chemicals and your brain does not stop finishing development until it's 25. So they can like mess with your brain's development, but that's the only reason there. I'm like, on that note, talking about the things that I don't really do. <laughs> <laughs> Tina's like, I'm okay like, with that. I'm barely a social drinker. And, and I don't particularly like I, uh, getting high. So I am all about laws and laws that take your physiology and medical ish into account. Like, I don't want arbitrary numbers. I want you to give me the fucking science for why this is a this is a good idea. That's all Sam needs. I see that? I mean, I don't really drink and I don't smoke, but you know what I do do? I make queer comics. There's a lot of door and I can't. Um, I'm Tina. I go by Cabby online, right? right, right, right. I can't point today. Usually I can point. Um, but yeah, I make queer art and comics and don't really drink or smoke. Um, I have Coffin Bed, a uh, romance about a lesbian vampire and human girlfriend, and a one-off called The Deep, about two deep sea mermaids who discuss job satisfaction. Both are available to read for free on my website, which will not be linked down below. I also didn't pull up my my library of links. Hold on. It, it will <laughs> be linked down below. Just surprise, me. Tina. Really, like, uh, I need to keep a surprise in a spot to to copy paste uh oh i didn't even i usually do a little uh, um but yes <laughs> I, i'm throwing myself off so bad um but yeah all my stuff is free to read on my website i have sam 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 july 22nd one mystery treat my secret of my romance is coming out i think this is actually the first time i've like said it publicly um I think I mentioned it on TSR very sneakily in the task list that I did uh, last week, and I don't think anyone noticed. Um, but uh, sweet, I didn't read anything in the task list. <laughs> it's okay. I kind of I put it there, and I was like, "Wait, I was going to tell people," and then I was like, "We're probably not going to see." <laughs> um, but yeah, one must treat secret of my romance. Uh, gay, like two dudes, gay. Um, Sam, Sam can say anything about it that she would like because she's read uh, pages as part of the depict room. I am really off the wall today. <laughs> I'm over gay dooku I was like, I have to clarify that it's gay, but like the dudes. <laughs> rather, than, rather than gay like me. I was I was just sitting here like surprise Tina, I gotta put in surprise Tina, surprise gay like two dudes gay me. Surprise Tina. <laughs> 
I'm crying. I'm so Her crying. link is now in the description below. Oh, brilliant. Is it one mystery treat or a mystery treat? One mystery treat. Okay, thank you. One mystery treat is super dear. Duperable, super adorable. I highly recommend reading it. It's a good thing we're closing the stream uh, down early. <laughs> also, all of Tina, the way she draws faces are like those oh. advanced emojis that people do, and I love it. I, I love that this is the comparison now <laughs> because I did the near eyebrow. Oh, one <laughs> eyebrow. I'm like, I've seen that eyebrow. <laughs> Yeah, I'm. I figured out the the schedule. It's gonna happen. I'm gonna have to make some social media stuff. It'll be fun. But uh, yeah, yeah, your turn. Okay, sorry, I was coughing, so I was like, I. I, didn't hear the no, I just wanted to clarify that I was finished because I'm so rambling today. You're fine. I gotta get back to my. No, I'm not I trying to boss writing. you around. I could never. You would punch me from across the screen. Hi, I'm writing mom Samantha L. Nelson. This is my channel where I talk about writer things, parent things, and writer parent things. Thank you all for being here tonight. Thanks for, you know, bearing with all of our, our mess today. And uh, if you would like to hang out and stuff, I have a Discord down below, which Tina has just linked via my Coffee Coffee Ko Fi account, which is. I'm still good at the you know, links. Yeah, just for a dollar. Um, madness. <laughs> Secretly, he was holding it chaos. All <laughs> uh, but uh, you can also go to my website, read some samples of my reading, sign up to my newsletter to keep up to date with all things Sam. And we hope to see you next week for a party with a not surprise yeah. Tina, just a regular yeah. Tina, who <laughs> will hopefully be less hectic. Thank uh, you, everybody. And we'll catch you next time. Bye. Bye.